nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 51 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem Nerd Dice. And as you can see from the board here, it is time for another retrospective. So the scope of this is from episode 36, which our last ep retrospective was episode 35 of Nerd Dice. So episode 36 through 50, this being the 51st, and it related to the um, the epic we had on our feature branch where we, we started out with episode 36, where I did some uh, filming with my iPhone of actually going through the properties of dice as objects in real life and how that operate, how that relates to object oriented programming in Ruby. And then we use the, the principles from that to develop the next several episodes, which went into that. So we started with the, um, and I can pull up, Where we kind of the, the scope of this in no that's not what I wanted in GitHub so the the implementation of the the die class and its spec well, then we went and. Uh, refactored that, added comparable to the die class in episode 39. We added some damage type and some other properties in episode 40. Then in episodes 41 and 42, we um, created, wrote the specs and the implementation for dice set. In 43, we added enumerable to it. And then in episodes 44 and 45, we did the specs and the uh, implementation for the, um, the highest and lowest, or advantage and disadvantage, if you're thinking in terms of 5e tabletop role playing, that would be um, what we have there. We fixed a bug, so creating this, these highlight, highest and lowest methods uh, produced a, a bug in terms of how you um, roll, re-roll all and th those methods interacted with each other, you'd eventually produce a, uh, a total of zero because you'd ex end up, wind up excluding all of the dice. So we, we fixed that. We uh, also in that, episode we um, we added the bonus attribute to, uh, writer to dice set the um, did a little bit of Ruby mix-ins so we took repeated code between die and dice set refactored it into a mix-in called and I don't really like love the name but um, sets randomization technique included that in both modules we added the roll dice method to the nerd dice module, similar implementation to total dice in episode 48. And then in 49, started working on the updating the, the readme and the change log in the course of doing that, I realized there were a couple of changes to the implementation of the classes that I wanted to make before getting it back into master. So we made those changes. And then in episode 50, our previous episode, we added the, uh, the new roll dice method with its objects into the nerd dice benchmark suite. So that is what we are covering in this area of the retrospectives. So I to start with on, on what, what went well, we'll um, actually, before we do that, well, let's take a look at our 
action items from our previous retro. So needless mouse movement ums and ahs, that will uh, convert over to our new board. I'll, I'll pause and do that after we review them. Um, fixing commits on the version to stable branch uh, we are already done. The opportunities to split stories, shorter videos, breaking test and features into separate videos. We, I, I made some progress on this. I can still make additional progress. There are a couple that were north of 40 minutes, which I, I really think is too long for a, for a single video. So keep an eye on that. That'll remain in progress, I think. Remember to pause the video for typing more often. I, I think even though there is always opportunity for improvement, I think we we'll, we'll can call this one done. So there have been multiple times where I've started typing something um, and it's going to be a, a fairly long block. I'll, I'll pause the video, type it, and show the, the results of the, the typing. The Inkscape stuff hasn't been started yet, and uh, Refresher training on RSpec, I think I'm in uh, decent shape there. RSpec has gone fairly well recently, so I'm going to mark that one as rejected. So the open ones and uh, the in-progress ones, I'll pause and move those over to the, the new action item board. So I've got my, my carry over action items moved over here. And let's take a look now at what went well, what didn't go well, and opportunities for new action items. So I'll start. I really liked with how episode 36 came out. So the, the live action with the dice that I recorded it from my iPhone without a, the phone on a stand. So the, the recording and production value of it isn't perfect, but and and the sound is a little inconsistent between the the screen share portion of the video and the the live action portion of the video. The live action sound was was a bit echoey, but I think overall I liked the concept of doing some in person stuff and doing some screen share stuff in the, in the same video. I think that's something to continue experimenting with. Uh, so after our last retro, you can see that there was a, a big red section, long gaps between, between videos 26 and 27, uh, close to six months without releasing a video on this. So since the last retro, I've been consistently releasing videos each weekday for, um, throughout so that's uh, going well I'm ahead of where my next release will be so this this video is um, not going to be released like tomorrow it's I, I've got a queue of videos lined up ready to uh, ready to schedule uh, for the next week or so so that's uh, a good place to be in I like how the implementation of the die and the dice set came out so it's always good to to like the the result of the programming that I'm doing in these instructional videos it was good to get back into that after doing some some of that CICD stuff which although fun and new wasn't his kind of programming intensive and as the, some of the, the the stuff with die and dice set the uh, we covered a, a bunch of different concepts as we went through this so we had the idea and some of it was artificial admittedly that I don't, I'm not sure you need for example to factor refactor out one repeated method into a mix and module but 
uh, we we did that. We did um, including the comparable mix in for our die and innumerable for dice set and seeing how those two items operated with each other. We had the um, kind of object interactions between die set and die, the ability to alias methods. So we had highest our highest method where you, you've got say four dice and you want to take the highest three. We did some aliasing, so we also called that with advantage. We called lowest with disadvantage. So a lot of concepts that we interacted with throughout this. Uh, some of the stuff with the enumerable class, so dealing with iterating over collections, some of the um, starting with maybe a little bit more awkward of a method, uh, refining it into something that's compact and in some cases even a, a one-liner was pretty pretty satisfying. The So this is one of our in-progress items. I've done a better job splitting up videos into smaller chunks overall. There were still a few that got a bit longer than I would want them to. I want to target between like 15 and 25 minutes for a video and some of them were were north of 40 and I may have even had one north of 50 so the ability to, to split those up I did uh, peeling back the curtain some I did split up 44 and 45 so I initially had the the new the, the advantage and disadvantage methods and their specs all in one video it was close to an hour and I wound up going in and splitting that up kind of after the fact so I I had the one large video I went into open um, open shot and I, I recorded an outro for the first video and an intro for the second video and just kind of edited around those and was able to split that up into two shorter videos instead of one really long video so making progress I'm doing better on our spec testing so there were fewer issues where I'm just um, kind of at a loss of how to do something idiomatically in our spec uh, I had been using mini test uh, for a while and it was probably it had been years since I'd done stuff with our spec before that so that is is going well the um, that I like the ability to kind of write out your requirements in essentially code form and then uh, implement them as you're going along. I think that's a a good way to go. You, our spec has a a documentation generation mode, so you can kind of think about how your program is supposed to behave and get information from your tests on how to do that. So that's what went well. Now let's take a look at items to improve. So I need to be more consistent with enunciation and volume when I'm debugging stuff and trying to figure out what's going on. I can kind of mutter and get mumbly. So my enunciation kind of falls off my, my volume gets inconsistent in terms of how I'm talking and so that becomes a less desirable experience for the the, the viewer when I do that. So that's a, a watch item for me. As noted, some, some of those videos still got longer than they should have. They, um, like particularly video 49 where I went in and did the the readme and the change log and then as I was working with it I went in and actually made two changes to the code that were um, I kind of added them to the backlog did them finish them all in that video but it wound up causing the video to run long so in the future when I'm doing something like that either I stop the video and kind of 
do the items in another video and then come back to the original video, I need to figure out how, how to do that. I do like the kind of the agile, I'm doing this and I see a problem, I just need to be better about scope creep. Uh, as you can see down there on that, that item, scope creep as it relates to the stuff that I'm doing in the current video. So um, I, it, in the future, I think I wanna add those to the backlog and then in a subsequent video tackle those. So that's a uh, something I can look at. Uh, continuing on, the reach on these videos is underwhelming. So a lot of these videos are getting zero views and I wanna improve that. So uh, for, for right now, it's not, it's not hair on fire urgent for me to take action to do this. I might look at an experiment with doing something like that Facebook gives you the, the $5 credit that you can use to improve your reach on a particular video and boost a post. I might take them up on that, but that would be a one-time deal, I think, at this point, because I don't have yet any um, anything for sale for money. The, the idea of spending money on advertising is kind of it would just be for the sake of of vanity at this point. I mean, it is good to build an audience and I think these videos are beneficial. So it would be good to have more people interacting with them, learning from them. Um, but it's kind of that, that catch 22. So if you're, you've made it to this point in the video and you like the stateless code, code casts, be sure to, um, like the video, share the video on social media, tell your friends. If you know somebody who is interested in programming but doesn't know where to start, this would be, I, I greatly appreciate and be thankful for any any boost that our, our videos get. The ums and uhs, mouse movement improved slightly but still an area of improvement. I've got that in progress still we talked about scope creep already. And then should have recognized the require error faster on the sets randomization technique mix in episode. So this was the one if we go into the code and into the nerd dice item. So I had the sets randomization technique below die and dice set in the require statements and it was causing the um, an unrecognized uninitialized constant error and it, it took me a good uh, few minutes to figure that out but as I don't, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself for that so part of why I do these videos in one take is it, I'm going to mess up from time to time and if I'm struggling through something and trying to learn it, then the viewers might also be, um, might also make the same mistakes. It's the, the, some of those mistakes are easy to make and seeing somebody struggle through trying to troubleshoot it rather than having the video edited out so that you're, you're, your end result is like Mozart, where you write the final symphony on the first draft, I don't think is always all that beneficial to the users. I think that might be a, a decent idea for a, a video, actually, if we go into an action item on this. So I'll pause and write out my action item, and I'll talk about it. So I've got my action item here, and I'm gonna make that the, the top one there. So the, the idea being similar to, I don't know if, if you haven't yet watched the uh, Simon Sinek Start With Why, How Great Leaders Influence People, um, it's a TED Talk. Immediately after you finish watching this video, go and watch that. So assigning some homework, but the idea 
if I'm going, if I'm doing something, it helps to occasionally do a, why am I doing this sort of video? So if I'm doing an end to end of how you do a Ruby gem implementation and I'm leaving the mistakes in, if I'm not doing that on purpose, then I shouldn't do it and I should get it out of the videos. But if I am doing it on purpose and I have a reason for it, I should articulate that and that can potentially help build an audience that way. So I'll, I'll see what I can do on that. I'm not sure it, it wouldn't belong in this series, but I might create a, maybe a why stateless code series or something like that and add that to it. So I'll, I'll experiment around with that and see how it goes. And then our last item there, writing descriptions for videos is still tedious. So it's, again, I think something that's still valuable and it's um, easy. I, I like being able to reference and click on a specific part of the video as a, a viewer of my own videos. And I assume that those who are watching the video is appreciated as well. It's just, it's a, uh, a bit of a, a time drag still. And it keeps me from any, any time where I'm writing a video description is time that I'm not spending recording new videos and writing code. So it's a the opportunity cost uh, trade off there. So I think that pretty much resolves what I want to to do. I've got the, the new action item. I think things overall are going fairly well. So I think we can end things there. Uh, continuous improvement in our retro. I, I think things are continuously improving here, especially as it relates to the the rate and delivery of these videos. So I'm encouraged. Um, we've got, I think I've got a, a long way to go. I, I'm not to where uh, I want to be in the end, but the, the way that you get better at doing something, whether it's programming or making videos or anything else is by doing it poorly and reflecting back on what you learn and improving on it. So that is no matter what you do and how you spend your time should be one of your primary considerations is how do I get better at this? And very often the way to get better at it is by doing it. So I will strive to continue doing this and making it better over time. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.